An icon of the Galapagos, the marine iguana can be found on every island on the archipelago. In some places, they swarm over the shoreline, basking on rocks in the sunlight. But these are no ordinary lizards. Once they are warm enough, they take to the sea to find their meal. They are looking for green and red algae that they scrape from the surface of the rocks. Some will even dive up to 40 meters to find the seaweed that few other animals can eat. But how can they digest these seaweeds when only a handful of other animals can? This question is much more than just a scientific curiosity. It may hold the key to saving these animals in the face of climate change. During climate events called El Niño, winds and currents change drastically across the Pacific. The effects of El Niño are particularly deadly for the species of the Galapagos. Warm waters without nutrients cause many food species of plankton and native marine algae to die. In their place, an invasive species of brown algae explodes in abundance. The iguanas, which of course feed on the native marine algae, struggle as well. In some cases, populations suffer collapses with as many as 90% of the individuals dying. Inside the dead iguanas, scientists have found the invasive brown algae, intact, undigested. But at the same time, some populations seem to suffer much less. Why do some iguanas die while others survive? That's where we suspect the microbiome may come in. Animals cannot digest on their own the complex carbohydrates found in algae and plants. For this, they need microbes, a whole diverse community of microscopic organisms that live within their digestive tract, also termed microbiomes. These interactions are far less studied and understood. We suspect that marine iguanas, like many other animals, depend on microbes living within their gut in order to degrade algae. But if they lack the microbes that can degrade and break down the invasive brown algae that takes over during the El Nino events, they might not be able to digest it and ultimately starve to death. We hypothesize that the iguanas that survive strong El Nino events may possess microbes capable of digesting the brown algae, allowing them to survive the hard times. What we have begun to do and hope to continue is to study the microbiomes of different iguana populations separated by the island chain. To do so, we have assembled a team of scientists from Ecuador, United States, Germany, and Israel. We hope to identify and isolate the microbes that can help the iguana digest the invasive brown algae. If we can do that and understand how iguanas share microbes between islands and populations, we may be able to deliberately introduce microbes that can degrade the brown algae into iguanas that cannot do so in a manner that could be spread naturally. These animals that so represent the Galapagos are at risk of disappearing. With climate change, El Niño events are happening more often and are more likely to get even worse. This means that their normal foods will become less and less common and the invasive brown algae will continue to spread. This could mean that this unique subspecies of iguana could begin to disappear. But if we can understand their microbiome and learn how they are shared between groups, we may be able to give the marine iguana a chance to survive in this changing world.